With dark clouds looming over household budgets, the Premier was keen to provide some relief. A $400 credit on power bills has been welcomed by welfare groups, but they're disappointed there wasn't a freeze on household fees and charges. That $400 won't go very far because we're talking about 12% increases in rental prices. We've got a 7.6% increase in inflation. Treasury forecasts the soaring cost of living will cool off in the coming years, but unions believe public sector employees should have been offered a larger pay rise, with the government sticking to its restrained wages policy. This is a budget that fails public sector workers. Our members need a really decent pay increase to keep up. They have suffered wages suppression for years and years. But the business lobby has backed the policy. The government's held its nerve here and congratulations to the government for holding firm. It's not just households under strain. As hospitals deal with record ambulance ramping and unprecedented demand, the budget contains significant health investment to ease the pressure. But doctors are concerned it's not enough. In the short term, I don't expect to see any difference in COVID or ramping. There were few nasty surprises in a budget the Premier hopes will showcase Labor's economic credentials as he tries to boost Anthony Albanese's campaign just nine days out from the federal election. The surplus has in part been topped up by WA's increased GST take and Mark McGowan is expecting other states to be jealous of his budget position. I suspect they'll be green with envy. Uh, some of them will look like they swallowed a bumblebee. If not for the GST deal with the Commonwealth, the budget shows WA's share would fall to just one cent in the dollar. Alicia O'Flaherty, ABC News.